you'll probably hear it first. A familiar XK straight six undertone, but with so much more volume and edge. Maybe you then catch a glimpse of it, and a glimpse is all you need to recognize such an iconic shape. Yet, this one looks somehow subtly better. But surely you can't improve on an E-Type, can you? Well, Eagle thinks you can, and I'm inclined to agree. This is Eagle's new lightweight GT, a very special modified restoration that pays homage to the 12 E-Type lightweight race cars of the early 60s. Like previous Eagle specials, such as the Speedster and Low Drag GT, this is not just a facsimile of the original design. Every line on the aluminium bodywork has been sympathetically reworked to give a smoother, yet more muscular appearance. There is extra rake on the bespoke windscreen. The seals are hidden, the doors are frameless, the indicators are flush and the sills are lower. It all comes together with an attention to detail that makes it seamlessly into something that is almost too bewitchingly beautiful to drive. But be driven it definitely should be because you need to make use of what is under the bonnet. Eagle has fitted its own all-aluminium 4.7-litre engine with a wide-angle head, big valves, and for this race-inspired road car, triple Weber carburettors. The numbers are 380 brake horsepower and 375 pounds foot of torque, which is ample when you consider that this car really does live up to the lightweight part of its name. In this spec, it has had the proverbial magnesium kitchen sink thrown at it, there are lightweight wishbones, tubular drive shafts, in canal manifolds, a titanium exhaust, and magnesium is used for the gearbox, differential housing, sump, and hubs. The featherweight cherries on the slim fast cake are the specially developed aluminium spinner nuts on the magnesium wheels. All in, this car has a dry weight of just 1,017 kilos. But Eagle hasn't forgotten the GT part of the name either. This is no stripped out racer inside. The interior is just fantastic. All the vents, the switches, things like this just feel gorgeous. There's such a quality to it. And this headlining, oh, so soft. The seats have improved over the years as well. These are the best ones I've sat in of any of the Eagles. They just put you at exactly the right sort of angle and they're really comfortable as well. But they hold you nicely when you get into the corners. That long bonnet does feel like it needs to be fed into the corners. It feels like a really quite a big car because of that long bonnet out in front of you. In fact, it's tiny really, but just because it's so low and so long, it looks bigger than it is. The original geometry on the E-Type was designed around cross fly tyres. And although they weren't around for very long in the life of the E-Type, they stuck with that geometry, so they didn't ever make the most of new radial tyres. So that was one of the things that Eagle did very early on. This has got Olin's dampers, and they are fantastic. The ride on this is quite busy at low levels, and then it just gets into that state at a certain speed where you feel that it breathes with the road much more. You feel they get into their happy place. This is the best of the Eagle Special Editions that I've driven, certainly. It just feels that much more precise. You can sense exactly what the contact patch is doing. I feel happier driving this that much harder. Because you're sitting pretty much on top of the rear wheels, it makes sensing the levels of traction that much easier when you're pushing on. It also tends to exacerbate any feeling of oversteer because you're that much further from the point that the car is pivoting around. Of course, as well as the looks and the suspension, the other big part of this car is the engine. This wide angle head, 4.7 litre aluminium block engine. But I think for me, the biggest part of its character probably comes from the three Weber carburettors. So normally Eagle, uses SU carbs, they have done fuel injection as well. And SUs, whilst they give a, a more rounded feel, they're very good. They're giving a very cultured feel to the engine, lots of lovely torque, very smooth. The Webers, 
well, they're a proper race unit really. Weber was founded almost a century ago in 1923, an Italian company. Now they're actually made in Spain and have been for almost 30 years now. And what makes them special is you get, well, you get the six chokes, so they're twin chokes, so you can just feed more air in. They're harder to tune and they have more of a distinct power band. They can be a bit sort of grumpy around idle or lower revs, but this has still got a lovely amount of torque lower down. And then when you get into the distinct power band, well, what a noise. The juxtaposition of those felt, suave, smooth looks and that almost dirty sound from the titanium exhaust. It's like somebody in a beautifully tailored Savile Row suit belting out a rock ballad or something. And that idea of a civilised race car gets to the very heart of where this eagle interpretation differs from those competition originals or Jaguar's own continuation cars. Talking of competition, The Jaguar E-Type Lightweight got its reputation as a fearsomely fast race car from that place down there, Goodwood. Not strange enough because of its antics in period, it never won the RAC TT or Tourist Trophy in the 1960s, but in 1998 the Goodwood Revival was launched and they had the RAC TT celebration and a lightweight E-Type won the first one with Nigel Corner and Barry Williams driving. It won the second one too with Nigel Corner and Mark Hales this time. In fact it won three of the first four and ten of the first twenty. So that's really I think where its reputation as the preeminent race car of its genre comes from. From the resto mod of car events. Fitting really. Actually, you just hear the gears rattling. It's just like a, it's like a GT3 or GT3 RS. I really like that. There's that mixture of road car and race car in this one that's really, really evident. That blend of road and track becomes more evident the more miles you do. You realise that it's a really keen engine, and although it's happy to sit at lower revs, the way it responds to the throttle, helped by the whole car's lack of inertia, means you're always being encouraged to keep reaching for that power band which kicks in at a very attainable 3,600 RPM. So it feels like you can make the most of it more often than you'd think. The thing that always sticks with me about Eagles, and particularly this one I think, is that they feel so solid is perhaps the wrong word given that they're lightweight but strong, I suppose. That's the feeling that I get from these. The steering is meaty, all the responses and lovely and well connected. This gear shift is obviously very E-type. Slow down here, you can see. There's a long way across from second up to third. It's a real throw it across the gate like that. The other thing I hadn't expected about being here is actually how airy it would feel. I've always thought that because this obviously has a much smaller sort of um, hard top, I suppose, than the low drag coupes, it might feel a bit claustrophobic. But the glass house around here is wonderful. That wrap around rear screen means that you have this lovely sense of space in here. And as you can see, I'm tall, I'm nearly six foot five, and I've got plenty of headroom as well. How much for one of these? Well, it's slightly a case of if you have to ask, I think. Eagle's always been pretty cagey. But for something that's so beautifully built and face it, rare, this is the only one in existence at the moment, and there are only seven low drag GTs and seven speedsters in existence. 
I think you're looking, it's fair to say, at a lottery win. And probably all six balls, not just five in the bonus. Is it worth it? Well, put it this way. When you look at a lot of modern supercars with similar price tags, I think this stacks up very well indeed. This really is dream drive sort of stuff. View out over that long bonnet, the vents. This is wonderful. 